Matthew chapter 22, verse 1. Again, Jesus spoke to them again in parable, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who have been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refuse to come. But before we continue on with the story, let me tell you what's going on here. As you already know, this is the month of Etanim, the month of wisdom, okay? But what's there is something especially special about this month. This is the month where we go and enter tabernacle with the Most High God. So therefore, as we read this parable, we're going to look at it in the context again of you entering tabernacle with God. So with that in mind, let us continue the reading. Then he sent some more servant and said, Tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fattened cows have been butchered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. So, me personally, someone invite me to a wedding banquet. I don't even have to spend anything. I'll be like, okay, when should I come? I might even come earlier than, 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 than um, schedule. But we see these people refuse to come to the banquet. Does that remind you of anyone? Does that remind you of anything at all that's going on? Verse 5, we read, But they pay no attention and went off, one to his field, another to his business. The rest seize his servants, mistreat them, and kill them. The king was enraged. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their cities. As I'm reading this, does anything come to your mind at all? Allow your mind to wonder and see what you come up with. Verse 8. Then he said to his servants, The wedding banquet is ready, but those I invite did not deserve to come. You see, you were invited. You refused the invitation. Now the king has decided you do not deserve to come. So go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you found, you find. So the servant went out into the street and gathered all the people they could find, the bad as well as the good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. Again, I ask you the same question. Does that remind you of anything? Does any picture come to your mind as we imagine what's going on? Well, this is what comes to my mind. God has called forth his people. And we know what happened to our forefathers. They disobey God. But now they even kill the servants. They mistreat them. Look at the life of all the prophets. What happened? Exactly. So now we see, he gets to the point where he says, you know what? Let anyone who wants to come, come. Anyone you can find, come. This is again, when Christ has appeared into the picture, we see salvation now is not exclusive only to the Israelites, but anyone who believe. Everyone is invited now. I'm excited. I don't know about you. So let's see what happened. Now we know the banquet hall is filled with guests. But verse 11, we read, 
But when the king came in to see the guest, of course, if I'm doing a party, if I'm having a feast, I want to know who's in there, who's present. So the king walked in to see all the guests. He noticed a man there who was not wearing the wedding clothes. He asked, how did you get in without wedding clothes, friend? The man was speechless. Again, I repeat, does anything come to your mind? We all invited into this feast. We all invited into this banquet. But how many of us gonna come prepared? Verse 13, we read. Then the king told the attendant, tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gashing of teeth. The king is serious. You are invited. I am invited. And we all going, right? But are you coming prepared? It says, Christ says himself, verse 14, for many are invited, but few are chosen. Brothers and sisters, as I mentioned earlier, we are indeed about to enter tabernacle with God. And you're all invited. But will you be found without the proper garment? Will you be found naked? Will you be found with the clothes that you are on the street? Or will you be found properly clothed in the presence of your God? Let's actually see what's going on. We are already celebrate the feast or the, act, the, the, the day of atonement, Yom Kippur. That was the time for you to repent of your sin and present your thanksgiving offering for sin on to the Lord. Have you done so? Maybe not. But we know some people has. But if you are not among those who have, it's still not too late. It's still not too late. And if you still the one who did present your offering again, still not too late. So now let's actually go to um, further by going into Leviticus chapter 23, verse 33. So we can know more about how we need to present properly clothed into this feast. Verse 33, we read, The Lord says to Moses, Say to the Israelites, On the fifteenth day of the seventh month, Okay? On the fifteenth day of the seventh month, This month, the sabbatical month, Etanim, Okay? This is the month we're talking about. This is what you have to do. The Lord's festival of tabernacle began. So on the 15th, the tabernacle began. Okay? And it lasts for seven days. The first day is sacred assembly. Do no regular work. So on, your, on the first day, regardless of the day, it is whether it's Saturday, Sunday, Monday, this is to be considered as a Sabbath for you. This is what it means. Okay? You do no regular work. For seven days, prepare food offering to the Lord. And on the eighth day, you hold a sacred assembly and present a food offering to the Lord. So again, I repeat. How do you come prepared? So as you enter in this feast, on the first day, it's a Sabbath for you. Okay? So which means this is the time to let go of all your doings and embrace again the feast of God. But as we see through for the seven days, what exactly we need to do? 
we need to present food offering to the Lord. So that means this is time for you to come um, to God, not empty handed, but with what? The offerings. Okay? This is the time, this is a festival, this is a time of celebration. This is not a time of blooming. This is not a time of sadness, but of celebration. This is happy time between you and your God. So, we continue reading. It says, it is the closing special assembly. So that's the last day. Okay, the eighth day, which is the Sabbath day. This is the closing day. This is when you're done with um, tabernacle. But verse 37, we're going to read a little commentary on what to do. It says, these are the Lord's appointed festival, which you are to proclaim as sacred assemblies for bringing food offering to the Lord, the burnt offering, and the grain offering, the sacrifices, the drink offerings required for each day. These offerings are addition. You see? These offerings are addition. Not the main thing, but we're adding to what we've been doing. It says to those for the Lord's Sabbath, and in addition to your gift, in whatever you have vowed, in all free will offerings you give to the Lord. So this is not the regular offerings that you give or the things that you vow, but rather addition to what you normally do. Okay? So these are addition. It says, <clears throat> verse 39, we read. So begin with the 15th day of the seventh month, which we know this is this month, Eitani. After you have gathered your crops, of the land celebrate the festival to the Lord for seven days so this is when you look at the resources that you have gather them all and decide how you're going to celebrate the Lord's festival for seven days the first day is a day of Sabbath rest again as I said regardless of the day it is whether it's Monday for that period of time, it's a Sabbath for you, the people of God. And the eighth day also is a day of Sabbath rest. On the first day, you are to take branches from luxuriant trees. And it gives us some examples. From palm trees, willows, and other leafy trees. And rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. Again, we see this moment, this season is not a season of sadness, but of rejoicing. We ought to go before God and rejoice and celebrate, right? Verse 41, we read, celebrate this as a festival to the Lord for seven days each year. And brothers and sisters, this year you are invited. You are invited. If you didn't think you are part of the house of Israel, guess what? Through Christ, you have been invited. Okay? So let's actually continue with the reading. This is to be a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. Celebrate it in the seventh month. Okay? So we see again, this is not something you do just one year and then ah next year uh, well i celebrated last year i don't have to do it again right no this is something that you do on a yearly basis okay for generations to come okay it says live in temporary shelters for seven days all the native born of israel are to live in such shelter so that your descendants will know that i had the Israelites live in temporary shelters when I brought them out of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. So if you consider the father 
the Most High as your God. This is an instruction for you. So as I said again, the king is throwing this banquet and you are invited. And if today, if you decide to partake in this, there is a blessing for you. Okay, there is a blessing for you because nothing God does, he does it for no reason. He does it to bless you. And actually, to actually fully understand the blessing, we must go back to the New Testament. Now, John chapter 7, verse 37, we read, On the last and greatest day of the festival, if we go back into that same passage, we will read that we're talking about the Feast of Tabernacle, this feast that I'm inviting you to. On the last and greatest day of the festival, of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Here's your blessing. Of course, you're going to feel thirsty throughout the year. But as you celebrate this festival, surely God has a plan. In case you think this is a joke, the Israelites, while well, they were under the law, this is why they're doing this. We see now this is time of Christ. When everyone is invited, he stood in the last day of the festival. The festival where you enter tabernacle with God. So therefore, if you decided to partake in this festival this year, watch out for the last day. Allow your heart to be open and your spirit to be alive because surely you will hear the voice of your Lord Jesus telling you this very statement. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Which means Jesus is ready to satisfy your needs on the last day of the festival. This is not an opportunity that you want to pass out. Because throughout those whole seven days, the Spirit will be speaking. The Spirit will reveal the hidden things. And therefore, this is the time for you to be ready and attentive. And surely, do not miss out on the opportunity to drink from the living water. Is this verse 38? Whoever believes in me, as scripture had says, had said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. You see, if you come and partake in this banquet, remember the king was doing the banquet for who? For his son. God is throwing this banquet, though we say we know we enter a tabernacle with God, but it is all in preparation for you to meet the prince. The king is want you to meet the prince, okay? So he says, come to my, to my banquet, to this wedding banquet. And now that you have come, the prince appeared. You did not expect to see the prince, but guess what? He appeared and says, Come and drink. Okay? And if you believe, spring of living water will flow from within you. And we need read in verse 39. By this he mean the spirit. Whom those who believe in him were later to receive. So this is not a joke brothers and sisters this is serious you are Christians and I can tell you 99.999% of Christians do not see the necessity to enter tabernacle with God although we said we have fellowship with God all the time we have fellowship with one another all the time but they do not see the necessity to celebrate this festival without realizing it is in that festival that you will be ready and prepared to drink 
the fullness of the living water. So if you're one of the Christians who do not see the necessity, it is important. And when you come to this feast, you must come prepared. And this shall be for the glory of God. In Jesus' name, amen. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the world, to heal the sick, to pray for the afflicted, and reveal unto them the purpose of God for their lives. Surely, the Sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing His plan to His servants, the prophets. The Lords want me to give you an opportunity to be a part of His movement through Lord Jesus' house of prayer. According to Malachi 3, verse 8 to 12, you can do so by sending your tithes and offering online or to the address listed on our website. All tithes and offering are prayed over, and whatever words the Spirit will bring forth, these I will report. And the Lord promised to bless you and to open for you the floodgates of heaven. Remember, we are here for you to help you turn your house into a house of prayer. Amen and Amen.